Okay, now for question number 15 from the specimen paper for IGCSE 2020 Cambridge exam. Here we have a question about sequences. It says, here is a sequence of numbers, 7, 5, 3, 1, minus 1. Find the next term of the sequence. So what we do is we look at the, how the terms change, and it seems quite obvious here that every time you have to go down by 2, go down by 2, go down by 2, go down by 2. And if you go down by another 2, minus 1, minus 2 is minus 3. That's the next term in the sequence. Simple as that. Then it says, find an expression for the nth term of the sequence. Now, to find the nth term of a sequence, what you need to do is you need to think about how it's changing. Now, if it's changing with a constant amount each time, then any number that con changes by a constant amount each time has got something to do with the times table of that number. So if something goes up in twos, two, four, six, eight, ten, it's got something to do with the two times table. Okay? Um, if something goes up in twos, like even three, five, seven, nine, it's still got something to do with the two times table because it's going up in twos, but you have to just adjust it. It's everything you say, everything's one more than the multiples of two, so it's like two n plus one. Okay, so that's you know an idea of how you think. So it's going down by two every time. So it's got something to do with the timetable of minus two, negative two times table. So minus two. N, that's how you express it, okay? So minus 2N is what generates the negative 2 times table. The first number will be minus 2, then minus 4, then minus 6, then minus 8, so it's going to be going down. All right, so that gives us um, the right way in which the numbers will change. It will make, uh, it will make our uh, sequence go down by 2 every time. So when N is equals 1, it will be minus 2, then minus 4, then minus six and minus eight. That's exactly what we want. We want something to go down by two each time. However, we want it to start from the number seven. We want it to start from the number seven. And for it to start at the number seven, we have to think when n equals one, when n equals one, um, I'm going to get the number minus two. Okay, our sequence will be minus two. So how do I make it start from seven? Now, if I think about it, if I add 9 to minus 2, I'm going to get 7. So if I add 7 to my sequence minus 2n, I'm going to get, the, my sorry, add 9, not 7, add 9 to my minus 2n, I'm going to get 7 as my first term. Because minus 2 plus 9 is equal to 7. So what we can do is we can test this. Like this is the first, this is the second, this is the third, this is the fourth. This is the fifth. Let's test it for one of the terms, like the fourth term, for example. Okay, the fourth term will be given by, you can say u4, the fourth term, will be given by, this is like un, the nth term, u minus 2 times 4 plus 9, which gives you minus 8 plus 9, which gives you 1. So you can see it's working. Okay, if we try, for example, 5, you'll have minus 2 times 5, which is minus 10. Minus 10 plus 9 is minus 1, which is correct. Minus 2 times 3 minus 6. Minus 6 plus 9 gives me plus 3. It works. So we can see we have got the right sequence. And instead of writing minus 2n plus 9, I could write it as 9 minus 2n. It's like the first term is going to be 9 minus 2, which is 7. The second term, 9 minus 4, which is 5. The third term, 9 minus 6, which is 3. So that's how we get the nth term of these kind of sequences where they go down by the same amount each time or they go up by the same amount each time. If it was going up by the same amount, say it was increasing by 2 each time, I would start off by writing 2n and then I would adjust where it starts by adding or subtracting something to that 2n. Okay, so that's how you deal with, that's like an easy way of dealing with these type of linear sequences, arithmetic sequences they're called sometimes. Okay, there is also a formula that many people learn. They learn a formula, un equals a plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, I don't really like to go into this formula in IGCSE because I don't think it's really necessary. I, I, if you can avoid learning formulae, it's better. If you understand, it's better for you. But this basically, what this is, for those of you who are used to it, the, the other way of doing this is to use this formula. This is for any term in an arithmetic sequence, as long as it's going up or down by the same amount. A stands for the first term, which is... 7. D stands for the common difference, is by how much it's going up or down in this, in this case. D is minus 2. And so if you want to find the nth term, you can say un is equal to a, which is 7 plus n minus 1. n is the nth term, we have to find that, times minus 2. So if you expand that, you're going to have un equals 7. You're going to have, mi you're going to have minus 2 times n, which is minus 2n, and minus 2 times minus 1, which is plus 
2. So you end up with 7 plus 2, which is 9, minus 2n, which is the same answer that we got. Okay, so many students actually do memorize this formula and they use this particular method, which, I mean, it's perfectly fine, but my personal preferences for IGCSE students is for them to understand what's happening and, you know, that helps them for other types of questions which might require a deeper understanding of the topic. Okay, but both of these methods are perfectly fine. Okay, un equals a plus n minus 1 times d. That requires you to memorize this particular formula. This requires you to understand what's happening with these numbers. Okay, so there we have the answer for question number 15. The answer for question number 16 should be found in the link um, in the playlist, which the link for, for that is in the description of this video um, below the video. So you can find all the other questions from this paper. Thank you for watching.